Okay, so welcome. Welcome to the uh, 20th day of the 40 day intensive awaken to the mind to the light within and um, so i'm really happy that you're here that you're participating in this that you're totally a part of this and um, so today we have the follow-up um, say that is the christian mystics um, meeting and uh, you're welcome to stay if you want to do that um, so today we're also going to use a prayer or the words of a Christian mystic. He's not too too old, so to speak. Not too long ago, but really beautiful. So that's what I want to use for the meditation. And because that is what we start with in the 40 days. We start with a meditation, contemplation kind of meeting. So there can be some words, there's silence, and there's some music. And... Uh, yeah, all, all the invitation to go within and to um, say, become still, become present, and uh, yeah, enter into your inner sanctuary, as you can say. It's like your inner sanctuary. You take time to go within. And it sounds easy. Um, it sounds easy when I say this. And it's not so easy always. And uh, I recognize that too. It's like um, there's there's not really like a habit that you evolve or an, a ritual that you fulfill in order to get there. So it's it is every day is different to do it, and that's my experience. It's always different. Um, but um, so there are some things that help, and these are the things that I mention. But that doesn't say anything about your experience of this all. So you might become completely still and you might say have experiences of light and love and connectedness. Or or you might have experiences of an incredible density or heaviness or mm, yeah, isolation or who knows what your experience is. So you know with meditation is actually great because there's no really an outcome to it. Like it is not that we say, yeah, focus on a certain outcome. It is not that it has to lead to a result. And um, when you can be that open to just step into the experience, no matter what it is, then say you, you make progress really fast. So you can easily sink deeper into your experience because you accepted it instead of that you're looking for something that you need to achieve. So the pressure falls off of looking for that. And also the disappointment falls away if you don't have any expectations at all. And does it matter? Uh, does it, say, influence the depth of your experience? No, it, isn't, it is not uh, by your doing. It is you open up and the rest will follow. It's like yeah we we say uh, take time to become so still and coming into a listening mode and the listening mode is not a director it is not that you can steer with that no it's it's always like that is not under conscious control what is going to happen and this is really important to to uh, recognize and remember otherwise you end up with a disappointment and and that's not necessary so expectation leads to disappointment. That's that's a cause and effect relationship that you build up in your in your thought system. So here we are. This is what I mean. So we come back to the place where we start to recognize. No, okay, whatever happens, one thing I know, and this is the most important part of of the meditation. The most important part is it is your experience. It is your attempt to come in contact with your creator. It is your uh, experience of it that matters, no matter what that experience is. Because the way that you try to figure out if it's good or if it's not good is also meaningless. So that's why the result is also like who is going to evaluate that. Uh, if I try to place that in my three-dimensional way of thinking, it's not going to be much. It will always look like a failure. 
So um, that's good to know. And I'm I'm sure that this um, prayer of Thielhardt de Chardin, this is what we are talking about, the Christian mystic Thielhardt de Chardin. Um, I'm going to, Pierre Thielhardt de Chardin, I'm going to tell you more about him, say, later. Um, but But here's one of the fundamental things that he did. It's like he, his focus was on paleontology, paleontology. So it's like he studied the, say, um, remains of ancient people, like ancient people. He discovered one that was, I think, 500,000 years old, just like the bones. And uh, and they dated it as 500,000 years old and that kind of thing. So he, he was really into material research, into looking for what was, yeah, what is on this timeline, what is occurring in it, and had a Christ experience too, which is amazing. That's an amazing uh, thing. And he is the one who can actually relate that to one another by being, by being the voice himself, like seeing how this fits in, into Christ's vision. So that is really beautiful. You know, that's really beautiful. We'll, more about that later. But he also wrote a lot of uh, materials, um, like books, essays, and um, some some scientific um, abstracts you can read. Uh, but we're going to use one of his prayers. It's, it's really, in fact, a real intense prayer. Um, but you recognize it uh, when you meditate. You recognize this as one of the, yeah, one of the things that you actually want sometimes want to scream out well he did it so most of his uh, writings also are related to the idea of fire the rediscovery of fire is one of his books it's like it's rediscovering of the fire within like the spirit within so this word fire will be in our um, prayer too but in a different way so I'm going to uh, set us up for a screen sharing. Okay, so I'm going to read it to you and repeat it, um, say, after probably a minute or four or five, and, and do that, repeat that cycle a couple of times. Lord, so let this come to you. Lord, lock me up in the deepest depths of your heart, holding me there, burn me, purify me, set me on fire, sublimate me, till I become utterly what you would have me be. Through the utter annihilation of my ego, Lord, lock me up in the deepest depths of your heart, holding me there, burn me, purify me, set me on fire, sublimate me, till I become utterly what you would have me be through the utter annihilation of my ego Lord lock me up in the deepest depths of your heart holding me there burn me purify me set me on fire sublimate me till I become utterly what you would have me be, through the utter annihilation of my ego.
Lord, lock me up in the deepest depths of your heart, holding me there. Burn me, purify me, set me on fire, sublimate me, till I become utterly what you would have me be. Through the utter annihilation of my ego, Lord, lock me up in the deepest depths of your heart, holding me there. Burn me and purify me. Set me on fire and sublimate me till I become utterly what you want me to be. 
through the utter annihilation of my ego. Lord, lock me up in the deepest depths of your heart, holding me there and burn me, purify me, set me on fire, sublimate me, till I become utterly what you would have me be, through the utter annihilation of my ego.
Lord, lock me up in the deepest depths of your heart, holding me there. Burn me, purify me, set me on fire, sublimate me, till I become utterly what you would have me be, through the utter annihilation of my ego. Thank you. Thank you for the meditation together. Um, I thought it was a great, um, yeah, great prayer, if you want, from, uh, from Pierre Thilhard de Chardin. And um, so we continue um, using his material in this um, meeting that we have. And um, so, um, like I said, he, he was a paleontologist. 
so he's examining his research he has been researching bones and all that uh, to discover uh, something about humanity something about the origin of of everything so he he went say into a depth um, uh, research into matter literally to discover the nature of uh, of it all and so there there are many sides to this and like there's a, a different way you can use this of course what he's sharing and um, so the great thing is that he um, he did it literally his way like this was for him he he literally chose to be a scientist so he did anthropology he did all kinds of like history geography he he, he studied a lot and um, um, so that was his path that was for him like essential to to come to the fullness of himself so to speak to discover who he really is that actually helped him see and that is the part that that is i think beautiful as an example so he was a pastor too like he had his um say religious things within the um, catholic church and uh, so this this when is this happening this is in 80 i think 80 80 that he was born and he passed on in 1955 i think just 10 years before joel and um so he actually um say decided to have a scientific career he he just he wanted to know everything about say geography everything to know about matter how it is related to god how it is part of creation how it is related to all of it and uh, so he he uh, wrote a couple of books uh, around that theme uh, one of them is uh, uh, the phenomena of man uh, maybe you know this book uh, phenomenon of man so i'll after this meeting i will send you uh, say an email with links to his materials because there's literally an audio book you can listen to uh, somebody's or maybe even a computer or robot is reading it to you but the words are still very well um yeah you can he listen to it pretty good uh, anyway so that's the book so one of the few words that he uses uh, as as kind of definitions is new sphere um, is um, omega point and is well so he has more um, i i can't come up with them right now but omega point is an important one because in fact he um, said described the christ experience as the omega point in the universe so it's like you have all kinds of levels of matter and they're all related and um, say also man has an essential part in it but there's also like it has a consciousness man has a consciousness but it doesn't stop there like there are uh, different ways of discovering the depths of your being and uh, so you come into different spheres as he calls them and uh, say finally come to the realization of your omega point that's in fact in everyone and especially when he started to say things like that within the catholic church where he was a pastor and he wrote books about it yeah new sphere um so uh, where he was talking about it in church uh, yeah that was that was not the right thing to do at least not in in the ears of the pope and of uh, cardinals that were around him see so he was uh, excommunicated a couple of times out of the church so he's, he was one time banned uh, in exile in uh, china where he continued his research as a paleontologist and uh, he was um, uh, in exile in uh, new york where he uh, actually passed on say later on so he he traveled a lot he was in all kinds of research all over the world and when it comes to the the absolute origin of uh, humankind so I, that, that's why i said he found this like um, the bones of the china man somewhere in china 
um, it has a different name, but I forgot about that. But uh, you can read that for sure. And so it's like this was like five hundred thousand years old, five hundred thousand years old, which is which is pretty long time if you if you recognize that. Um, say humankind is on the planet according to science for 40,000 years uh, so this is like a real early thing but see he was interested in that and he tried to relate everything in in the sphere of coming to the evolution of man and rediscovering the passion the fire within just like we prayed for in our meditations like the fire within um, in fact spirit within and um, say rediscovering fire it was in one of the uh, books also that he wrote but it's more like it was an idea of you actually recognize something that was already there but now in a whole different way it comes to you like in full flame and of course he's not the only one who uses terms like fire in uh, as a comparison to spirit because you know the uh, probably you know the uh, mystic Saint Germain too so he's he's talking about a violet flame and um, so there's a lot of relationship on a on a very high say esoteric level in fact or um where you where you recognize there's something else there's something to discover for me and he actually went on that adventure in his very own way well the beauty is then okay so let's see when was he born so i i uh, i'm not an astrologist um, but i have heard a lot about it from uh, the people that I was with, so to speak. So I, I picked up a lot of that. And when I see that he was born the 1st of May, so he's probably, but so some of us here can confirm that. He, he was uh, uh, in Taurus, you know, very much interested in material things like matter. It has to be concrete, uh, best. But still, you see that that doesn't have to be a limitation to come to your Christ recognition whatsoever. It's like it's beautiful if you start to recognize the ways that people come to their own, um, say, revelation of the truth of who they are. They cannot but go their own way. And I think that's what I want to use Pierre Tillard de Chardin for. Like as an example, he's an ex extremely outspoken man in a relationship with matter. And that for me was like, I wow, I, I would not co have come up with it. But I, I'm not Pierre Tillard de Chardin either. So I, I've, of course, my own way of, of coming to that. So it's so individual. Your transformational process is so individual, but so beautiful how somebody can be an example of, oh yeah, so I, I really only have to be myself, even in my humanhood, all these aspects, all these parts of me are going to be used to wake up out of the dream that I find myself in. It will give me that, um, like, it will dissolve that language of me i will go beyond the words and the forms of my discoveries uh, into the say the rediscovery of the passion of my love for god so that is uh, such beautiful he's such a beautiful example of that so i always had a very good feeling listening to Pierre Thiele to Chardin's materials like when it was read to me or when I was reading it so I, I came up I think it's the, the Goodwill store that I was in in Boston or something uh, when I just stepped out of Mary Baker's church in Boston I ran into a bookstore and found and found in a, a book of Thiele to Chardin so that is this book it's like um, the hymn of the universe now there are many, um, I got prayer out of this book too, that I 
but there are many uh, pensées, he says, like uh, contemplations in this booklet, even though it's a very small booklet. And I want to read a little bit of that, um, if you let me. Oh yeah, here it is. It's just interesting, his language. Of course, this is translated, I guess, from France too. From France, from French into English. Let us leave the surface and, without leaving the world, plunge into God. There and from there, in Him and through Him, we shall hold all things and have command of all things. We shall find again the essence and the splendor of all the flowers, the lights. We have had to surrender here and now in order to be faithful to life. Those beings whom here and now we despair of ever reaching and influencing, they too will be there, united together at that central point in their being, which is at once the most vulnerable and the most receptive and the most enriching. So he's, he's in fact talking about the same as I was sharing with you about too. It's like the recognition of that, that we're one, but that's great. You know, the, the idea of that we're one is great. To come to the experience of this oneness, you cannot not do this, but up your, in your own way. And uh, using your means to do this using your path like you're literally walking on that path and it can only go your way so it doesn't mean that you have to become a pastor or a paleontologist to to get to your christ recognition no this is already happening so you are on the path exactly in your way having the things happening to you um, say choosing certain um, choosing the things in your life in which you continue uh, and discover to go when you go beyond the form and beyond the words and beyond what you're actually doing to discover that there is something else that is dawning in your experience of yourself like that that goes your way like for me it was um, I was in art school when I had my first um, awakening experiences I was making art I was in my studio that's where it happened for me like I cannot I cannot deny that it was an essential part to come to my choice to to choose to do that you know it's like that was an essential step after everything else that I have done I suddenly come into the uh, say the path of self-expression of of, of um, uh, making art opening up for inspiration and all this like after all that i all the time that i've tried to deny this by doing a technical study being in say un university um, doing a nursing education, doing this, doing that, all these things that you've done, that I've done, to come to the point where I actually start doing what I always wanted to do and felt that I had to do. But it was like dismissed or it was told, uh, I was told like, well, you shouldn't do art, you know, it's never going to pay or you will not have a good life when you do so or this and that. No. So finally I choose to go to art school and, and, and do this. And, and in that, the most essential thing happened to me. It's not, it does not have to do with the art that I was making. It had to do with the discovery that I only can be myself. And in that, like, it will be given to me to, to go beyond myself. Like it's, it's uh, essential to do these things too in order to, to uh, say, step through the portal and discover uh, yeah, the, the true trueness of your being. It's like that was the force pulling you anyway. That was the force um, 
giving you that already or showing you that like go this way this way now you were guided all along the way so that's why you never have to doubt where you find yourself like there's a perfect plan it's working really well and so it is with our <laughs> paleontologist who was a pastor too he 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 had a good mind he he could research really well he was a smart guy so to speak but that that was really a talent that was necessary for him to come to the place where he actually moved through the portal into his own being and uh, so it does not matter what you do see as long as you're inspired to do it and um, when you feel like yes this is this is an essential part of me for me to do this and in your uh, say in your uh, spiritual studies you you start to let everything fall into place and that is so beautiful in the if you look at this in a transformational perspective so for me then self expression say being being born in in august uh, as a leo uh, expression of myself i i do self expression yes of course it's like that's and that's also a part of of this you know so so it's nice to look at it that way so you can take a look at yourself with this and say like okay so how does that work for me um, what am i actually doing and where am, do i find myself in my uh, transformational path and uh, just to um, to discover uh, how well everything is starting to fall into place you know it's like yeah, there does not need to be any conflict anymore. It's like I know that um, the things that I do, I don't do to find fulfillment, but I do the things that I do to uh, to discover something about myself. You know that. So that, yeah, I I made that point. <laughs> uh, let me see. Is there more in the book? Um, Okay, so here's more of the hymn of the universe. Lift up your head, Jerusalem, and see the immense multitude of those who build and those who seek. See all those who toil in laboratories, in studios, in factories, in the deserts, and in the vast crucible of human society. For all the fermented produ uh, produced, so all the ferment produced by their labors in art, in science, in thought, all is for you. Therefore, open your arms wide, open wide your heart, and like Christ your Lord, welcome the wave flow, the flood of the sap of humanity take it to yourself for without its baptism you will wither away for lack of longing as a flower withers for lack of water and preserve it and care for it since without your son it will go stupidly to waste in sterile roots shoots in sterile shoots sorry what has become of the temptations aroused by a world too fast in its horizons too seductive in its beauty they no longer exist the earth mother can indeed take me now into the immensity of her arms she can enlarge me with her life or take me back into her primordial dust she can adorn herself for me with every allurement, every horror, every mystery. She can intoxicate me with the scent of her tangibility and her unity. She can throw me to my knees in expectancy of what is maturing in her womb. 
but all her enchantments can no longer harm me, since she has become for me more than herself and beyond herself, the body of him who is and who is to come. Well, see, if you like to hear this, <laughs> like there's a humongous amount more like this, I love this. I think this is so beautiful, the way he says it in such an earthly manner, but goes beyond it too. Like that, to me, is fascinating about her Tilat, Pierre Tilat de Chardin. It is so beautiful. And, and it's actually, it's very calming to read it too. So I can really say, um, recommend you to, to read some more if this is you know, resonating with you. So that's really lovely. So I actually think about sharing something about uh, uh, Pierre Thielhardt, and it's a video. It says, I'm not going to play the whole video, but just a little bit of it. It's an interesting way to, to look at him, and there's also something interesting about the presenter of this uh, video. We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. Someday, after mastering the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love and then for a second time in the history of the world man will have discovered fire above all trust in the slow work of God we are quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. We should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient of being on the way to something unknown, something new. And yet, it is the law of all progress that it is made by passing through some stages of instability, and that it may take a very long time and so I think it is with you. Your ideas mature gradually. Let them grow. Let them shape themselves without undue haste. Don't try to force them on as though you could be today what time, that is to say, grace and circumstances, acting on your own goodwill will make of you tomorrow. Only God could say what this new spirit gradually forming within you will be. Give our Lord the benefit of believing that His hand is leading you and accept the anxiety of feeling yourself in suspense and incomplete. There is almost a sensual longing for communion with others who have a large vision. The immense fulfillment of the friendship between those engaged in furthering the evolution of consciousness has a quality impossible to describe. Our duty as men and women is to proceed as if limits to our ability did not exist. We are collaborators in creation. Do not forget that the value and interest of life 
is not so much to do conspicuous things as to do ordinary things with a perception of their enormous value. All right, so that was a man with a very deep voice. I cannot, I cannot imitate that at all. Um, but it's great. So I, I loved to share some of this, uh, just because of the fact that it is bringing in some ideas of, um, of our, uh, Christian mystic Pierre and, um, uh, okay. So the questions that follow that he shares, okay, you, you, I don't know what to do with that. Basically, that's why I stopped the video. So. I see that, uh, and this is really interesting, actually, for your own discovery. It's like I see that when you start to look for a certain Christian uh, mystic, that um, a lot of it is used to um, say emphasize people's own story, and and it's a tendency, of course. I, I'm I'm doing the same thing, probably, but coming from from my perspective in a different way and um, so you see that that is so specific also to listen to that because the questions that some people rise that, that they put up you would not ask anymore <laughs> and um, so for instance the idea what Thielhardt shared and where he was uh, communicated for had everything to do with direct communication with God see that that did not pay off for the for the Catholic Church it was they they worked with the idea that you had to give to the church in order to have a good place in heaven just like you see in, in the Muslim world now too. Like if you follow these rules, then you have a good place in heaven. It has nothing to do with the direct communication that is possible now. And that makes everything different. So if you hear what <coughs> Teilhard, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin shares with you, it is always pointing to the direct communication with with God, it is helping you to plunge into God, as he says in this what we read, or like set me on fire, completely say annihilate me, in order to be fully present in the heart of God. That is what he is offering. In fact, in everything that he's writing, and that is exactly when he was not say popular for people had like well that's that's blasphemy you cannot do that it's the same as with jesus you know of course it's the same story as with jesus jesus could not share what he what his experience was without being crucified it's like n nobody's going to accept that if you try to say maintain your place in humanhood if you try to defend yourself in this human setup of power and and uh, yeah opposition and all that so that's why it's so nice to bring um first bring in what he shares in the meditation so you feel you already make a deep connection with what is shared and you recognize your own say desire but in the very subtle place of the stillness of your being you receive this and you recognize this the oneness in it uh, like it's literally use you use his voice to to say the same and that's what I love about uh, our uh, meeting and our setup here, that we do it this way, because um, it is still about the intimacy of your God contact yourself. It is, this is not about someone else. No, this is about the recognition of, of the essence that is being shared to you that you recognize in yourself. So yeah, this this is always great. This this is the same as listening to Joel of, or listening to Master Teacher or whoever you listen to. Like that is the same idea. 
it starts to become the recognition that that all is happening in you, you have start to recognize yourself as the Christ that you are. You start to recognize the light of the world that you are. And um, so great. That's why I love the illustrations. That's why I love, say, the illustrations of the personal expression of it all. The personal expressions of everyone who comes to this experience, who actually discovers something deeply within himself. So that's really great. So I will send out some some materials after this uh, class. You can read it or watch it or listen to it. It's it's uh, great to uh, hear some of the phenomena of man, because then you see what he is really about. So if you love his language and it resonates with you, please listen to it. But I'm sharing it anyway. All right. So thank you so much for uh, for being in this class and uh, listening and being open to receive this. Um, uh, in class, we continue with some sharing and maybe some questions. Or And uh, so for now, I would say thank you so much and uh, see you soon. <laughs>